Welcome to Connecting the Dots, the channel where we follow the breadcrumbs and try to predict where disruptions will take us. Chris Camillo is an early investor in private humanoid robot companies. He knows what happens behind the scenes, sees the amazing progress in the field, and has internal information on how close we really are to having humanoids doing actual work. So before anything, Let's hear what Chris had to say on the Dumb Money channel. Like I said, I've been investing for 35 plus years. This is by far the most exciting thing that I have seen decades as an investor. In fact, the last time I was this excited for a sector play, I'll never forget the street we were walking down. And this is an engineer. And he spent five minutes explaining to me just how large cloud computing was going to be. And I literally went to my computer and I bought a massive amount of Amazon. And this is pre-split, like 70 something dollars a share. And I still hold those shares today. And it is one of the biggest gainers over the past decade for me. And it's just made so much sense. It was almost like a train that was coming that you just could not stop. But I have even more conviction about this because at the time there was a grouping of people that really thought that cloud computing wasn't going to take over the way it did. I don't really see any debate here long-term for people that understand how quickly humanoid engineering has come in the last 18 months. And by the way, when I read the comments on the Optimus videos, it is so clear to me, people are so, so skeptical. They don't, they're not mm -hmm. seeing what we see. They don't, like we've seen behind the curtain. It's real guys, it is not a choreographed thing. This is absolutely real. This is happening. Humanoids are taking over the earth. That is going to happen, at least in terms of commercialized and industrialized applications. There's no stopping the fact that we will have millions to tens of millions, I believe, hundreds of millions of humanoids working around the globe over the next 10 to 20 years. We can debate how quickly it will happen. We can debate who the companies will be that will employ the majority of those humanoids. The thesis here is that Tesla will be a leader, at least a top three manufacturer of humanoids. But it's for, as far as I'm concerned, this is happening and I'm laser focused on how I'm going to make money off it because it's so clear to me that the rest of the world doesn't believe it yet. We'll get back to this discussion later. A few weeks ago, Tesla released a video of their Gen 2 humanoid robot, which showed a quantum leap in robot capabilities. The robot's impressive dexterity, control, and fluency of movement show it is finally ready to start doing useful work in Tesla's factories. AI has made huge strides, the technology for humanoid robots has arrived, and Tesla is about to unleash them to start working in factories, yet, except for some hit pieces, mainstream media barely mentions the robot, and Wall Street analysts don't include it in valuations. Their ignorance is our opportunity, but nothing here is investment advice. So to help you form your own opinion about the robot, I created a couple of videos. In a video released two weeks ago, I provided an engineering analysis of the technology and advanced AI, which enabled Tesla to create a factory ready robot in record time. The video shows why the bot is real and not just pie in the sky. And there's a link to it at the end of this video. The current video focuses on the robot's outstanding economic impact and provides models and numbers to show the huge value the robot should bring to the world and the insane effect it will have on Tesla's profits and share price. I'm a world-class engineer, but I don't expect you to take my word on it. So I'll also show interviews with experts, investors, and the CEO of a humanoid robots company. None of them is related to Tesla and most are competitors, but as you will see, all of them expect Optimus to catapult Tesla to become the world's first deca trillion dollar company. Patrons make this channel possible. So a quick shout out to my latest patrons, Doug P, Anderson H, John T, David K, Adam H, Jeremy, Rob L, Jamil H, Mark E, Timothy G, Robert V, Paul H, and Jurgen H. You guys rock. Now buckle up and get ready because TeslaBot is about to disrupt everything and disruption is never boring. Boston's Stanley Steamer. Let's listen to Tony Siba, an expert in predicting disruptions. Disruptions are happening in all levels, all around the world, all at once. The next 15, 20 years are gonna be the most disruptive in history, bar none. And it's not just disruption, it's what I call phase change disruption. We are now at the dawn of a new age where humanoid robots will start working in factories doing boring and dangerous jobs. I said, we are now, and I mean it literally, because the robots are coming and they are finally ready. Recent advances in several fields, such as controllers, batteries, sensors, perception, 
and mostly artificial intelligence to rule them all, converged and suddenly made humanoid robots possible. People can't grasp this, as Boston Dynamics have been working on humanoid robots for years and have yet to show anything nearly as useful as a human, but thinking through Boston is misleading. While their Atlas robot is widely considered the cutting edge, and until recently it truly was, in less than a year, it became obsolete. In 2023, an AI tsunami swept the scene, carrying newcomers forward and turning Atlas into a relic of an analog past. If this seems unreal, remind yourself that just one year ago, so did ChatGPT and image creation, but then they arrived and changed the world. Atlas truly was impressive when it just came out, but a decade has passed. Technology advanced by leaps and bounds, and Atlas remained behind. It uses hydraulic actuators, where newer robots use lighter, cheaper, and more efficient electromechanical ones. Its bulky battery pack lasts an hour of operation or four in standby, while new robots integrated packs last much longer. Atlas has limited understanding of its environment, while the new breed uses vision AI to perceive what's around. Atlas doesn't have fingers while most others do. And Atlas is difficult to program while others can even teach themselves. The list goes on, but you get the idea, so let's continue. People think that Humanoid robots are a very hard problem, and that's very true. But just like clearly marked highways make autopilot a much simpler problem to solve than go everywhere FSD, initially limiting the robot's scope to factory work makes the problem much easier to solve. Assembly line surroundings rarely change. The cars arriving at each station barely change. The weather doesn't change anything, and neither does the time of day. In many stations, the work is simple, so all you need is to run simulations and then train some more with the actual robot, and you're done. 2024 will be a milestone year with humanoid robots productively working in factories, but don't take my word for it. Here's Sandy Monroe. Uh, when do you think the Optimus would actually be on the Tesla car manufacturing line? He's asking these questions. I'm thinking it's going to happen. Um, I think it's going to happen this year. Wow. Crazy, crazy predictions. Well, it's going to be. <laughs> I mean, it's not crazy. I mean, mm. I saw what I saw. If you want further explanations, watch my other video. But for now, all we need is to realize that the robots are coming and they are nothing like Atlas. In a way, Atlas reminds me of the Stanley Steamer when electric and internal combustion cars were about to arrive. Everyone knew that steam cars were powerful and quiet and they were getting safer than ever. Everybody knew that, but only a few realized they were also outdated and running out of time. And even fewer imagined the industries, the prosperity and the freedom that cars would bring and that the world as they knew it was about to change. Fast forward to 2023, we are those few who know, and the change will be bigger than ever. The robot's NBA. To evaluate the robot, we first need to determine its price. And a product's price is mostly determined by its NBA, or next best alternative. One alternative could be to use humanoid robots made by competing companies. We'll discuss the competition later, but let's first continue without them. When working in factories, Tesla's robot should do jobs currently performed by humans. So the next best alternative to owning a factory bot is to employ a factory worker to do that job. Let's see how this works out. Soon robots will be even better than humans in many roles, but for the entire valuation, I will assume that they are on par with human workers. As my previous video showed, there are no major hurdles preventing this from happening. And as seen here, Sandy Monroe thinks the same. What jobs can Optimus really do in the Tesla factory? I have serious doubts about it. I'm an automation engineer. Okay, an automation engineer, they're going to be attacking the 3Ds, dirty, dangerous, and drudgery. And based on what I saw, and I am an automation engineer, I've got several, I had several patents. Um, I was a chief engineer of Valiant Machine Tool, which is a huge, was a huge organization. I was the lead for automation and um, automatic feed and uh, also automatic testing for engine division. But at the end of the day, uh, I can tell you right now what I saw would allow me to do anything that falls into 3Ds. And I think that based on what I saw with that one video that I, he wouldn't give me, I can guarantee you that there's nothing on the assembly line that a man could do that this thing couldn't do. And it's that's no bullshit. And that comes straight from, like I just, <laughs> you talked about cogs and I don't know. Well, I do know this, uh, it'll do anything if it's the same as what I saw. The average annual salary for U.S. manufacturing workers ranges from $40,000 to $50,000. But salary is just part of the cost, as there are also hidden costs like health care, insurance, retirement funds, productivity losses from breaks, vacation and unplanned days off, and even potential legal costs, 
where employees or ex-employees sue the employer. This puts a 25% to 40% overhead on the salary, so the total cost should be from $50,000 to $70,000 per year for a single employee. We'll use $60,000 per year for this calculation. Now imagine a robot that works tirelessly three shifts a day without the need for breaks or benefits, except maybe an hour or two per day. Tesla bot could effectively do the work of not just one, but three workers. So three times 60,000 gives an annual cost saving of approximately $180,000 per each robot employed. But robots can work seven days a week while humans only do five. So multiplying by seven and dividing by five tells us that the next best alternative of using one robot is to spend over $250,000 per year on human workers. When a single humanoid robot saves a quarter of a million dollars each and every year for around 10 years, any thoughts of Tesla soon selling humanoid robots for $20,000 or even $50,000 a pop completely fall apart. This will happen eventually once the market is more saturated. But as we will see when addressing TAM, retail sales are unlikely to happen for several years. Tesla could decide to sell robots to retail users for other reasons, such as collecting data for training outside factories. But from a pure profit perspective at least, as well as advancing the mission, it should take several years before retail sales make any sense. So how should Tesla price such a cost saver? If they sell it for a million bucks, it would repay itself after four years, and that's still a great buy. But paying so much upfront would limit the number of robots a company could afford to employ. A much easier model is to lease the bot, or as I see it, rent it for a monthly salary of say $10,000 per month. This means paying Tesla $120,000 per year for every robot, which might seem expensive, but in fact is a huge bargain. Considering that price this way, each robot would in fact save the business $130,000 per year in operating costs. The first to suggest that robots should be rented for salaries was my CTO friend right after Tesla's inaugural AI day. But the idea still holds. Here's what Brett Adcock, CEO of robotic startup Figure AI, had to say to ARK Invest's Sam Chorus. So I would say, you know, our view is that one of the healthier business models, I mean, there's basically two ways to look at this. We can either sell the robot like a traditional uh, CapEx model, like the way you would buy a car or something like that. And you, you would buy it, you would own it, you'd depreciate it on your balance sheet. That's one model we could do. Uh, the second model is basically a leasing model. In the robotics area, they call it like robots a service, like RAS, like similar to SAS, which is kind of funny. And that, that would basically be you leasing the robot. And we feel that the latter, like leasing the robot, is one of the like better business models for figure and for the world longer term. We think it's a way to reduce the upfront burden to how much it costs. We, it's an ability for us to push more hardware and software into the systems, meaning we can constantly be refurbishing your hardware. We can be pushing new software into it basically weekly or daily. Um, and making the robot better. And if you look at the way the world is structured today, at least on the commercial side, like humans are RAS. You pay humans annually, you lease them. So the businesses are all set up to basically like lease this kind of labor. One of the most interesting ways to train robots is to create them with innate curiosity and let them explore new ways of doing things. The results can be staggering, sometimes millions of times better than the usual way things were done. Curiosity and the love of learning are the cornerstones of progress. And if, like me, you enjoy learning how things work, you'll love the sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant offers thousands of lessons on math, science and engineering, computer science and data science, which make learning fun. I'm currently taking two very different courses on Brilliant for two different purposes. For growth, I've started Sabine Hassenfelder's excellent quantum mechanics course. Brilliant's courses are extremely well thought out, so each lesson builds on the previous with a gradually increasing level of difficulty. Lessons are interlaced with simulations, videos, and experiments, and include questions to check your understanding and help cement your knowledge, along with useful explanations and hints. And while not a beginner, I'm retaking their scientific thinking course. I love taking their basic science and technology courses as refreshers from time to time. They are interactive and fun, and I progress through them with a big smile on my face as they reignite my curious inner child and remind me why I love science and engineering so much. New lessons are added monthly, and they cover a wide variety of topics from statistics to astrophysics, and from foundational and advanced math to AI, Python, and machine learning. And if you're a space fan, they even have a course on terraforming Mars, and they're all presented in a very active, gamified way. So go feed your curiosity and learn new skills by signing up to Brilliant with my link in the description 
brilliant.org slash CT dots. Brilliant are offering 20% off the annual premium subscription to the first 200 people and a 30 day free trial to everyone who signs up through my link. So you have nothing to lose. Head off to brilliant.org slash CT dots and experience it for yourself. And thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. The first few years, Tesla pricing at half the monthly salary isn't just about numbers. It's a strategic move, one that positions Tesla's humanoid robots as an irresistible option for businesses, a high-tech solution that is 50% more economical than traditional labor. But we're jumping ahead of ourselves as before it starts selling to others, Tesla will first use the robots in its own factories. This will enable Tesla to develop the robots peacefully without media backlash or wasting time dealing with customers, instructing them, and providing customer support. What's more, using the robots in-house shortens development cycles and accelerates training. And since Tesla is also the customer, they will gain the entire cost savings each robot provides, or $250,000 per robot once it's on par with humans. Roughly 50,000 of Tesla's employees are line workers, and Tesla plans to continue expanding by building Giga Mexico and possibly other factories, adding new lines to produce its current models, including Cybertruck, and building additional models such as the Next Generation Model 2 and RoboTaxi platform. And that's just for vehicles. Without going into batteries, mega packs, and other Tesla energy products, which should grow even faster than vehicles. The huge growth expected should make room for a whole lot of robots, even without firing human workers. But let's not go there yet. When Tom Zhu discussed a Model 2 factory, he mentioned 5,000 workers and 5,000 humanoid robots. So for starters, let's keep the numbers small and assume that globally and over all their product lines, Tesla will employ a mere 10,000 humanoid robots. Let's see what happens. So 10,000 robots, times $250,000 in cost savings per robot per year gives a total saving of $2.5 billion per year, which over a 10-year lifetime gives $25 billion in cost savings. In other words, 10,000 robots used internally will produce higher earnings than the $17.4 billion EBITDA that Tesla achieved in 2022 by producing, shipping, selling, and servicing 1.37 million cars. Nice, right? With so much at stake, Tesla is hugely incentivized to ramp up as quickly as possible. They'll probably start using robots in simple tasks, such as feeding parts to the KUKA industrial robots, and very rapidly start advancing to other stations in growing order of complexity and accumulated skills required. Let's add to that three factors, which are A, training for factory jobs has become much easier than ramping up production. B, several robots can be taught in parallel to do different tasks. And C, once a single robot learns to do the job properly, the entire humanoid robot workforce masters it. Taking these factors into account, there will be no shortage of positions for robots to fill, and Tesla's internal demand will be more than enough for several years. I used 10,000 robots as an easy example, but that's peanuts. There will be many, many more. Now imagine that Tesla has more and more robots working on the line, constantly getting better at what they are doing and constantly learning new stations. Then, two or three years from now, Tesla or SpaceX invite a few news and technology channels for a factory tour where they see robots operating in several stations completely unattended. Tesla will show huge cost savings affecting their bottom line and announce that the robots are ready for sale. Once news breaks out, getting customers will be easy because if top managements of manufacturing companies see the footage and hear the impact on Tesla's results, they will show interest. And once Tesla provides a few robots along with assistance for more specific training and the companies try them out, they will come beating on Tesla's door with fistfuls of dollars, asking Tesla for as many robots as they can give them. Companies such as Ford and Toyota, Johnson & Johnson and Frito-Lay will line up to get robots before their competitors do. But don't take my word for it. Let's listen to Brett Adcock again. I think Tesla Optimus is making great progress. I think they have a great team. I think they'll have a really good shot at making this work um, from what I know from the outside. And then beyond that, we really don't pay too close attention to the rest of the groups. We feel like what the dependency is for the horde industry is that somebody needs to show the world that there's useful human-like work that clients would pay for that are happening in the world. Competing robotics companies can't wait for Tesla to start selling robots because they know that once news breaks out that humanoid robots can do some jobs as good or even better than humans, the floodgates for quasi-infinite orders and funding will open for them as well. If you thought Cybertruck's pre-order list is crazy, 
Imagine the number of orders Tesla will get for these money printers. Demand will be insane. And regardless of how fast Tesla and its competitors manage to ramp up, it will take many years until production is able to meet demand. Example, Toyota. If you're still having doubts, let's look at Toyota. In the USA and Canada alone, Toyota employs almost 40,000 workers in manufacturing plants. Let's say Toyota wants to have the equivalent of half of that in robots. With a 40-hour work week, each worker does an average of 2,080 hours per year. So 20,000 workers do a total of 41 million and 600,000 work hours per year. Following the UAW strike, Toyota preemptively raised salaries to $34.80 per hour. So these hours become $1 billion, $447 million, and $680,000 in salaries before hidden costs. Somewhere else in the interview, Brett Adcock confirmed they see their robots working over 20 hours per day, seven days a week, and let's be conservative and assume some downtime, so only 350 days per year. If so, each robot would work 7,000 hours of work per year and Toyota would need 5943 robots from Tesla to do the work. If each bot is rented for $10,000 per month or $120,000 per year, like I suggested before, Toyota would pay Tesla over $713 million per year. This sounds like a whole lot of money, until you realize that doing so would save Toyota over $734 million each and every year. In other words, where do we sign? These are stupid amounts of money, yet companies will gladly pay them because those that won't will just go out of business. It's as simple as that. Total addressable market. I wanted to make a chapter about the TAM or total addressable market, but that would be stupid. So I'll just give the main bullets and then explain why this is stupid. I wanted to show how in the USA alone, there are 12 million manufacturing jobs, robots, would first do simple jobs, mostly dirty, dangerous, and drudgery ones, but there are so many of these and training has become so easy that by the time production starts catching up with demand, the humanoids should have additional skills, which would unlock additional jobs, so demand would constantly outstrip supply. I also wanted to show how as production ramps up, manufacturing costs will decline, and robots should gradually enter lower wage markets. With huge scale and with robots manufacturing other robots, the production cost of robots should eventually be so low that even in low wage countries, renting robots at half the hourly wages should be profitable for both Tesla and those hiring the robots. Eventually, I wanted to show how there are over half a billion manufacturing jobs open for using robots and provide you with a spreadsheet with the number of manufacturing workers and average wage in each country and let you play with what percent of the jobs will be taken by robots, how many of these will be Tesla's and at what price, and then link it all to Tesla's profits, valuation, and share price. It's a cool exercise, but a futile one because it is based on two fallacies. The first fallacy is that while I wanted to limit the scope of this video to manufacturing jobs because they are lower hanging fruit compared to other jobs, by the time it will take Tesla and other manufacturers to make several millions of robots and start making a dent in the current number of jobs in high wage countries alone, artificial intelligence should advance so much that new jobs will be possible and the new markets this should open will turn manufacturing into a niche. There could even be AGI, but even without it, the capabilities would be infinitely higher than what can be unlocked now. And the other fallacy is that even looking at the current number of manufacturing jobs is wrong. There is a huge shortage of workers, especially in boring and dangerous jobs. So the current number is limited by the availability of workers and by the number of workers an employer can afford to employ. Since robots provide unlimited availability and significantly cut labor costs, demand will grow. In fact, it should be quasi-infinite. Let's hear what Chris Camillo has to say on this. Chris lists 10 boring occupations, which he sees robots entering first, and then goes on saying, uh, Let me just quickly go through the financials just so we're all on the same page. And I'm not pulling this from thin air. For those of y'all watching today, you probably know that we've been investing in private robotics and humanoid companies as well. And we do have some insight into the cost structure of these humanoids, where they are today, where they're headed in the next 24 months. Um, and we're relatively comfortable, I'm relatively comfortable uh, that we'll have about a $40,000 humanoid here in a few years in terms of reduction cost or, and I'm not even thinking of someone producing them at scale like Tesla, but just for the generalized production cost. So I'm use, utilizing a $40,000 figure. Again, 
This is gross revenue per bot of $94,000 annually based on my assumptions. So the payback period is less than six months, like what, like a five month payback period. So beyond that, and this is, this is a pretty loose estimate. I've estimated the cost of servicing, maintaining, placing when there's repairs, uh, and having actual oversight of those humanoids from the manufacturer in terms of uh, monitoring is $10,000. Okay. So that is the ongoing cost. So think about that. We're talking about a 90% margin product here uh, mm -hmm. per humanoid, $94,000 a year at an ongoing cost of $10,000 a year. So with, the, with nearly unlimited demand, you're, you're only covering a very small portion in your estimate of that so potential get to that. total addressable my, market. So I'm going to get to my in-service number, my in-service number by 2030. And this is assuming that Tesla begins deployment and testing and training in 2025. Now, to be clear, the humanoid company that we're invested in is initiating training and deployment in 2024. So in early, early next year, uh, our humanoid is going to be deployed and start training with logistics companies. We already know that Amazon is testing humanoids with one of our competing private companies. So this is happening right now. Tesla is a bit behind uh, and they're a bit more measured and differentiated in their approach to their Optimus humanoid. So we're going to assume that their testing doesn't start until 2025. I am estimating that there is a two year testing cycle before they start actually manufacturing and producing humanoids for any of these use cases. And I have an assumption that by 2030 or the end of 2030, that of the 85 million humans that we are short in the world, all right, uh, for commercial applications, that Tesla bot will be able to serve one point, have 1.5 million in service. Okay, so just 1.5 million humanoids globally. That's it in service, generating $94,525 a year in gross revenue, puts us at $141 billion a year gross revenue okay um so when i look at the operating expenses roughly 12 billion dollars a year now remember we're, we're going to spend about i think it was like i don't know 60 billion I, uh, it was a fairly large number 60 billion dollars to produce these so tesla's gonna have to take out some debt to produce these. i'm not concerned about that i think that will be an easy an easy get uh with the upkeep Excuse me, my upkeep was $8,000 a year. It was not $10,000. $8,000 a year. Gross operating expenses of $12 billion across the 1.5 million uh, humanoids in service with an annual operating profit of $129,792,000,000. Now, if we utilize Tesla's current PE ratio, it's around 80 or so. And I actually think that Tesla is going to have PE expansion once we enter the humanoid <laughs> era. Okay. Well, let's, let's just say that, that the PE stays where it is now of 80. That puts you at a 10.5. $3.8 trillion valuation just for the Optimus division test. So I laid out what I believe is a rel it's a speculative but relatively conservative uh, estimate of where Optimus can take Tesla by 2030. That even by his own estimates, I mean, he's estimating 100 million robots and you're only estimating 1.5. So like... <laughs> That's a very, I feel like it's a conservative number, a conservative way of getting to a $10 trillion valuation. But, but Dave, I want you to understand that the numbers I'm pulling are not coming from thin air. They're based loosely off other numbers. Other that industries, I'm aware of. the industries that will use this. It totally no, makes but not sense. Not only that, the production, the production, the utilization, the hours per day, these are all uh, related to other humanoid company estimates that I've read about, that I've discussed with other humanoid engineers. Uh, so these are not coming from thin air. This is very doable. This is an execution play. There are a lot of ways that Tesla can mess this up. But again, this is not 
like autonomous driving where nobody has done it. There's no, yep. where we have government regulations that could theoretically push out autonomous driving uh, for 20 to 30 more years. We don't know. That could happen. Yeah. Okay. This, yeah, I mean, there are government regulations that could come in for some of the industries that you're discussing. I think when you're talking about like health applications and things like that, that's going to be at, you know, this the, is not, remember, this is not human dip- displacement yet. Right. This is accommodating need, right? Existing government need. need. To, to, to save healthcare. revenue. As we can see, Chris is extremely bullish on Tesla's Optimus. The numbers he gave are not far from mine, although, of course, his model is much more detailed than mine. The bottom line is that demand will be infinite and for the foreseeable future, constantly growing ahead of supply. The competition. Supply and demand is where we address the competition because the crux of competition lies in its influence on product demand. This means if the market sees other robots that outperform or undercut Tesla's Optimus, Tesla might need to adjust its strategy, possibly even lowering prices. Having said that, excuse me as I make a brash announcement and say that I don't give a flying fraudster about the competition. Although some competitors are ahead of Tesla in some respects, and some have even sold robots that work in warehouses, this will barely affect Tesla's finances. Let's revisit the Toyota scenario for a moment. Imagine you are CEO of Toyota USA and Tesla offers to lease you robots that will have your current labor costs. An irresistible proposition, right? Now imagine another company comes along with a similar robot at a tempting price of just $20,000. It sounds like a steal, but there's a catch. They already have a deal to supply Ford or Hyundai with every robot they can make for the next three years, meaning you won't see any significant delivery from them till then. In this situation, you will probably reserve your place in line, but until it gets there, you'd opt for Tesla's robots so you can reduce labor costs right away, rather than waiting on a promise. It's a winner takes most scenario. And in this high stakes game, Tesla is not just playing, it's poised to dominate, thanks to several advantages it has. I don't want to elaborate on this, but briefly, because of its auto business, Tesla is in a leading position when it comes to the following technologies actuators, batteries, inference software such as an FSD, training and simulations, data collection, dojo training computers, production know-how. They also have better financing than startups, and they get more job applications from great manufacturing, robotics, and AI engineers. As an example, I had the pleasure of watching the latest AI Day live stream in a Teams call of my CTO friend's company. At one point, she messaged me to look at one of the applicants sitting in the audience and told me, see that guy? That's a future LeBron. They get the best of the best. But Tesla has another crucial advantage, and that is that they are a rapidly growing car company. This enables Tesla to become its own training site and more importantly, its own customer. When another robotics company wants to train their humanoid robot to do production line work, they have to sign a deal with another company, say Stellantis, to get access to their production line. Then they have to go to Stellantis's factory, possibly in another state, to observe and record how assembly line operations are done in a handful of stations. When they build simulations based on this, they have to consult with Stellantis engineers in order to improve the simulation and find faults. If they decide that a change in production line or the build of the car would make it more robot friendly, this takes ages to implement. And when the robot is ready for testing on the production line, they need to create an exact copy of each station they want to tackle in the Stellantis factory, or more likely, wait for some downtime at Stellantis so they can briefly test the bot in actual stations. And every time the robot completes a task, a Stellantis employee will have to rate the quality of its work so it can be added to the training data set. And once actual work starts, any goof up the robot makes can halt the production line. With Tesla, things are much simpler. Robot engineers have free access to the factory, to production engineers and assembly workers. In fact, it is highly likely that the teams will include experienced engineers from the car production side. Their computers are directly connected to the car factory's databases, including all plans for both the machine, which is the car, and the machine that makes the machine, the assembly line itself. They can visit the factory at any time or set shop and move there altogether. They will be able to request reasonable changes in the car and the factory station. Since Tesla's production is organized as a matrix of cells, they can open a parallel station when the factory is working and directly compare the bot with human workers working in parallel. Moreover, these human workers will provide valuable feedback as they see the bot in real time. And every time the bot 
finishes the operation, there is immediate feedback as the job is automatically ranked by the company's DSM digital self-management system. This increases agility, lowers costs, and reduces cycle time by orders of magnitude. I cannot underscore enough the significance of this. And since Tesla is its own customer, every good part the robot produces during training partly pays for the training itself because Tesla can then use the part in an actual car. As robots improve, this becomes increasingly significant. And once they reach human level at a station, each bot used there will bring Tesla the entire $250,000 per year costs savings. With so many advantages, Tesla should win the robot game. Everyone that knows anything agrees on this. Figure AI CEO Brett Adcock, manufacturing legend Sandy Monroe, private investor in other robotic startups Chris Camillo, and even my CTO friend that put everything she has on Tesla stock when they just announced the robot. Like Chris said about cloud computing, it's like a train that is coming that nobody can stop. You see the powerful engine, you know the talented engineers, you know there is nothing blocking the rails and where the rails are heading. For me, everything is clear. Tell me below. How about you? A special announcement. Before wrapping up, I have a special announcement. I hope you like this video, and if so, please give it a like to help with the YouTube algorithm, but also make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button because the next video will be something special. I can't tell you what it's about, except that it's about Tesla, and I am extremely excited about it. So please consider subscribing and hitting the bell button because I don't think you'll want to miss it. Also consider supporting me on patreon.com slash connecting odots because without patrons, this channel would not be possible. Don't forget to visit Brilliant, the sponsor of this video, at brilliant.org slash ct dots and get your free trial and 20% off. Going back to the Teslabot video that started this journey for me two years ago. When discussing the robot with her, I asked my friend why she referred to Tesla as Chome and how much she sees Tesla's stock growing. 10x? 100x? She replied in a contemplating tone, 10x? No. 100x? 1000x? 10,000x? Unlimited, really. We can't even grasp how big they can get. You know, it's hard to imagine because we never had anything this big in our entire history. That's why I called them Chome. It's the only thing I could compare them to so that people would get how big this size is from the future. It's science fiction. 2024 should be remembered as a landmark year in human history. Have an amazing 2024, my friends. And until next time, I am connecting the dots and you are amazing. To get notified of the video, please subscribe and hit the like button. A huge thank you to my friend Kay for reviewing the videos and her continuous support of the channel as a producer level patron. Joining her and supporting me on Patreon for as little as one buck a month helps me create these videos and offers ad-free early access and my exclusive patron-only news videos. Follow me on X where I am connecting O dots. Until next time, I am connecting the dots and you are amazing. When you're up against the wall and you cannot fall, so go, go, go.